Well, it's a warm Saturday, um, grand final day of the AFL, and I'm going to head to um, Trinity Beach to uh, watch the game at the tavern. Not sure how busy it's going to be, um, but we'll give it a go. It's no big deal. Uh, I'd like to see um, the uh, Brisbane Lions win, but uh, you know, I'm just uh, just an excuse to get out and about having a walk. I haven't walked for a few days since. Tuesday? Um, not sure. I think Tuesday. It's been a few days then because it's Saturday now. So, yeah, um, I actually um, feel a bit better today because I, on uh, Thursday, I got uh, a letter through the mail which was a little distressing. It was from uh, PayPal and it was their. Um, uh, their collection agency saying that I owed them $703 and this was the final um, request. I had Not that I'd received any other requests from them uh, but yeah, we found that a little distressing considering I've, I've had a few issues with PayPal of recent times. I haven't actually used PayPal myself for years. Uh, my own PayPal account is frozen and uh, and I had um, fraudulent PayPal debits against my bank account, uh, which took place earlier this year. So uh, I've got a bit of history with them. So I didn't think that it was going to be uh, totally kosher. Well, I knew. I thought, how could I be charged something when I don't even have an active PayPal account? That seemed the obvious one. So I actually did the right thing and rang up PayPal on Thursday morning, and that was a total waste of time. I got through to a Filipino um, call centre, and I was uh, switched to other operators twice, so I got my, my call was bounced twice. And at no stage would they, they weren't able to identify me because I had to tell them what the bank account was on the old PayPal account. I had no idea because I hadn't used the bloody thing for years. And as a consequence, I got absolutely nowhere. And uh, I was pretty pissed off, and I basically hung up at the end. I just had it. So my only other option then was to basically go to the uh, the Australian Financial uh, Advisory Body. I'm not sure what the disputes body anyway. Uh, I can never remember what the bloody name is. It, uh, it's four, four letters anyway, and starts it with an A. I'll put it up on screen. But anyway, so so you can do that online, which is great, because I'd rather prefer... I'd prefer to do all this stuff online rather than on the phone, because the phone takes time. It's uh, it's not a very reliable system, and the thing like that happens with a large company. You get, you get transferred from one person to another, and no one takes responsibility. So I decided to, to write down what had occurred, uh, and... Uh, and just filled in all the details and um, you know I wasn't sure what, what was going to be the upshot of it although I did check some Google reviews on their collection agency and uh, there's a lot of people who are pretty unhappy with them they're based in Melbourne uh, TR something or rather is their name and uh, and uh, a number of Google reviewers are saying they think they're scams and others saying no they're legit but uh, Obviously, there's a lot of very unhappy campers who have dealt with them, and I decided to go directly with PayPal rather than the collection agency. But at the end of the call with PayPal, they suggested I contact the collection agency. So they wouldn't do anything for me. They couldn't identify me. They wouldn't. They, they provided me with no information, and the, the only uh, suggestion they could make is for me to read the, ring the collection agency. Pathetic. So... Um, I did the right thing, as it turned out. I went, you know, like I said, went through PayPal and I put in the complaint. And uh, this is Saturday and I checked my, my email this morning and there was actually a reply from that, that um, organisation and they basically had contacted PayPal and PayPal had basically said, no, you're not, you don't owe any money. You went through the, the previous frauds and what have you. Obviously, the wires had got crossed, but that's not good enough. I mean puts me through a bit of stress getting a, a, um, 
a letter like that. It's not pleasant. It really isn't. You know, I'm the sort of person who likes to pay their bills straight away and do the right thing. But anyway, as it turned out, uh, they just said, no, no you, you, you are not liable to any debt uh, with us. And that's basically it. Um, they probably should pay me compensation, really, but they're going to be, have to pay for the fact that I referred to this organisation because every time you put a referral into a financial institution, uh, I think they had their charge around 40 maybe $50. So PayPal are out of pocket for doing this, and that gives me some small satisfaction, I guess. But it all has been resolved. I was surprised it happened when I got the email on Saturday morning. Maybe they'd send it Friday night, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I was pretty, still pretty surprised to get a reply that quickly. So they were pretty efficient. So, you know, hats off to that, that organisation. I'm pretty pretty happy with them. And uh, and now I can sort of rest more peacefully on the weekend. I just, yeah, having debts like that that you had no, no knowledge of. They, by the way, the postcode wasn't correct. The address was, but not the postcode. So I don't know if that means much, but... Uh, Australia Post decided to be diligent and actually send it to me anyway. Thank you, Australia Post. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, that's, that's out of the way. Another bugbear I've got at the moment is there seems to be a, a tug of war occurring between uh, ad blockers and uh, YouTube. Um, there's, I, I've, I've never had to listen to YouTube ads because I've always had the ad blockers. But it is a real pain. So what I've what you what I've learned to do is you push M on your keyboard, and that will mute out all the sound. So as soon as the ad comes up, just push that button, and at least you don't have to listen to the ad, which is one of the most annoying aspects of them. But um, the other thing about it is, though, with I I've got it the ad blocker disabled on my um, main computer on the desktop, but on the laptop I've got the the uh, ad block is still functioning and um, a lot of the time that YouTube will just put up a screen saying that you've got an ad blocker on you can't access these these videos but today I've got access again so the ad, what happens is the ad flicks on for a second you don't hear any sound but just on for about a second or so and then it goes back goes to, goes through to the actual video without you having to to push the uh, skip video um, thing, which is a bit of a hassle. So um, that that's good. Uh, the other weird thing about it is that uh, I keep getting the same damn ad, and it's just ridiculous because it's someone, it's a company I've used. It's Fast Cover Online ins uh, Travel Insurance, and I've, I actually used them on my last trip. And this same bloody ad comes up all the time and it is super annoying. It's, it's no good to the company. It's actually a negative because it makes me pissed off with them for having the damn thing. And, it, of course, I don't need to be told about them because I'm already aware of them. I've used them. I'm a customer. So it's just a total negative experience they're created by having this... Uh, this fast cover ad keep up because it's got the same music each time, the same graphics. And like I say, 90% of the time, that's the ad that comes up, which is pretty crazy. I thought you were able to at least vary the advertising if you have to put up with it. And of course, it makes me think, well, maybe it's a good thing I'm nowhere near the 1,000 subscribers because then uh, I won't be inflicting this upon anybody. I won't be able to be monetized, and maybe that's a good thing. It looks like it's not going to happen anyway. <laughs> it's just theoretical. But... Uh, Oh, I do want to give a shout out too to one of my um, people watching the the. Well, I assume that they were watching the the the, uh, the channel. Have actually uh, purchased the first instalment of my uh, uh, alternate history story that I've uh, that I've actually uh, published on Amazon. Uh, three other people as well in the states have actually done it as well. So I've got four sales on that. So that's been by far the most successful. So that's encouraging, and I'm actually midway through writing the second instalment of that story. So uh, it, I just need a little bit of encouragement, and it does make a big difference. So uh, I think monetarily I'm probably made a little over a dollar. <laughs> so 
it's not the major issue, that's for sure. But uh, I think it's a dollar ninety-eight actually, if I recall. Um, woo! Crack open the champagne. Yeah, today's um, supposed to be thirty-two degrees. It's warmed up quite a bit in the last few days, and I've had to use my ceiling fan in my bedroom when I go to bed. So uh, that's the first time probably since April that I've had to do that. So definitely getting warmer. So I know last year we had a very warm October. So but anyway, it's good to get that stuff out of the way. Well, the only other thing I had to chase up was I thought I'd missed out on my um, major dividends last year. Uh, for Tel Telstra uh, and um, and CBA, but I hadn't they actually had been paid, so that's good. I've just got to now do an amended tax return to include those amounts. Uh, but the other thing I've actually finally got off my ass was I contacted Computer Share, who are a share registry company, one of the three that I know of, and um, just to tell them that I that the, the dividends I got from my Coles shares. Uh, uh, the, in the end of uh, 2023 went to a hacker's account so at least I've told them now they'll probably just tell me to piss off and I've got no hope of getting the money back but you never know they might have insurance to cover that type of thing so it's worth doing it's only a matter of putting in a, uh, a note to the to computer share so fingers crossed I especially wanted to do that after I thought I was might maybe going to get stung 700 bucks from my PayPal for a, a bad debt that I that wasn't mine. But uh, yeah, they're taking a while to get that done. This uh, new developments, it's they're getting there, I guess. But it's it is taking a while for the uh, construction to be. Well, they've done a bit of landscaping. Uh, the other thing I also got was. Uh, I bought some some new uh, seeds, and I've now got lemon seeds. I've got five of those, and they're actually a uh, a blue colour. They've got a blue dye. That's very strange. I've never seen seeds that colour. So I've got those. I've planted three of them, so I've got two left. And um, I've also got some uh, tomato plants. There's an English variety. And also the moneymaker variety tomatoes, and I planted them today. So maybe in a week or so's time, I'll see something come out. A few of the plants are coming up, but I, I was really hoping that maybe some of the trees that I, the the, um, the seeds I've planted for trees, which are sort of like dust, they're that tiny. I was hoping that something like that would come up, like bottle brush seeds um, and tea tree seeds, but uh, none of those have germinated so far. So. Just keep keep watering them every day and just hoping for the best. I'm going through a hell of a lot of potting mix. I also got my garden extended on Thursday when Dale was around. So another meter, a cubic meter of uh, cypress wood chips were uh, added to the, the garden. So there's a lot less grass now and it looks a hell of a lot better. But it'll look even better still once I get some plants to put in there. So that's my next goal go down to branches and get some uh, some plants to bought to to, uh, to put along the side of the house so at least the exterior is going to look a little better there's plenty of work to be done inside the house but uh, just got to do step by step at least my finances are a bit better I've got my dividends for the um, the big two which is CBA and Telstra this week so yeah I've got a bit of cash to splash so what the hell it's about time I, uh, I'd maybe put the accelerator down on a bit of renovation work. Mind you, I spent about four or five hundred bucks on on just getting the uh, uh, with with labour and parts and uh, labour and materials for the um, extension of the the garden, but that's probably cheap compared to say using a landscaper. Dale's very good value, uh, so I don't have any complaints there. Anyway, this is a little shortcut take through uh, this is down Kawara Beach to this is the one that my neighbours use uh, the other one's more sort of public it goes through the housing estate this one's a little more discreet I guess so although I've seen people in this particular cul-de-sac sort of being out and about I suppose it's sort of conducive to a uh, 
a bit of a neighbour type get together. One of the nice things about this area. And I'm going to catch up with Sid, who's just um, finally moved into his his house, his flat in uh, apartment, I think two bedroom apartment. Oh, well, I successfully got rid of those files on this camera, so it's operating again, which is good. Beautiful day. A little cooler than it's been the last few days. I think it's going to be a top temperature, about 29 today. And it has got up to 32, so it makes a bit of a difference. Those extra few degrees. And uh, looks like I finally got my, um, my travel issues resolved with having to go down to Brisbane. Um, if you've got some sort of a... I've just got a consult I've got to have with a specialist. And um, they will pay, pay for the transport. Although I'm just wondering whether... They're going to try to uh, make me go by train, I hope not, because it will just take that much longer. Um, it was never, never happened before, but for some reason, maybe I've rubbed them up the wrong way. I've done nothing wrong. No one told me you had to have this Form C set, filled in after a consultation. You know, I'm just the patient, for God's sake. I think they're a little arrogant there, down at... Uh, well, down at the ophthalmology section, anyway. Um, I thought the actual uh, on the ward and everything, and the operation I had to to uh, get the dislodged retina fixed. That was all fantastic. I had no no gripes at all. It was very good. Um, but I just find that that that's a bit of a, an arrogant attitude to think that patients should know the the system when it comes to the bureaucracy forms that need to be filled in and what have you. Well, I was never told that. And maybe the problem is starts in Cairns because um, I didn't... It, we're a bit of a backwater here, especially, I suppose, in that specialist-type area. And I think the guy who was, uh, who was examining me, I don't think he was fantastic at all that, you know, crossing his T's and dotting his I's. And maybe you were supposed to tell me all that stuff, but it didn't get it didn't get through to me. So um, it wasn't an issue last time either. That's the weird thing. Like I've uh, I've had to have this happen before with Townsville with the other eye. Uh, that that retina also dislodged. That was the left eye, which is my better one. And thank God I had a full recovery, which was great. But. Uh, Yes, that's my body. It's pretty flawed. Uh, human body ain't fantastic, especially mine. But uh, I'm still able to be uh, independent. That's pretty damn important, I think, in this world. So uh, that's the good news. But, uh, yeah, it just annoys me when bureaucracy gets in the way there because it just... But it seems as if it's been resolved. I finally got that that uh, Form C emailed to me yesterday and I passed it on to the people who actually do the bookings for flights in Cairns. That's a separate office here. So it's, you know, just all the bureaucracy involved. I think I've finally got it under control and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll be contacted with uh, details of either flights well, hopefully not the rail. I mean, I don't mind travelling by rail, but I just don't have the time. The last thing I want to have to do is actually, if, if the rail travel means you've got to stay overnight in Brisbane, well, that's a huge added expense and hassle. They will pay for it, but it's not. It's false economy. It's better to have people not stay overnight because uh, the cost of accommodation in Brisbane is very high these days. So, yeah. Uh, and look, I don't even know whether they were just pissed off because I bucked the system. I, I went on my overseas trip, so I didn't get the return ticket to Cairns, which is what you normally do. And I went on the overseas trip because I thought that would be better for everybody. It means that I don't have to hit the government for the charge of the return airfare because I make my own way back from Vietnam via Sydney. But uh, I don't think you get any brownie points for that. They don't seem to care. And it annoys me that 
you know, governments can waste money like that and there's no incentive for them to uh, to do the right thing and try to get cheaper fish. That's that's why I got on to them early too because I thought the earlier I get on to to the flight people here who book those those medical flights, the cheaper the fares would be. You know, I don't want the taxpayer being hit. So trying to do the right thing, but no one seems to care. It's just a big machine. It's an unfortunate situation. Uh, I've also found out that the early voting booth is going to be down in West Court, which isn't ideal. I wish it was in Cannes Central, but I can't have everything. But I'll definitely take up that offer because uh, I don't want to go on. I never, I never vote on on voting day. It's just it's too crowded. My vote's not going to change in the next few weeks either. I assure you. So I'm pretty well uh, chiselled in. So, anyway, it's good to do this walk because it's good for my back health and just general health. And tomorrow, I'll be walking to the uh, the tavern. So I'll get another walk in tomorrow. So it's good to get a few. I had a bike ride yesterday. Uh, and uh, just good to get out and about, especially with the weather being so benign right now. Today's a nicer day than yesterday. It was a bit overcast yesterday. But uh, this is perfect. It's clear and it's not too hot. Couldn't ask for a better day. You know, that was a total cock-up. I had the wrong uh, prescription. It was for the two other eye drops I had for the uh, for my right eye. That I'm, it's so confusing at the moment because I've taken three different types of eye drops and the other two are for the one I've, uh, I had the op on recently. So I've got a two additional drops. I have to put one... One drop of each of these uh, twice a day, plus the uh, the normal cosop, but the cosop's not available. They've got to get some other type. So it's all I don't know what's going on. It's very strange. I mean, you think it's something that people would really need or want, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I might I might just go back to Trinity Beach and go go to that pharmacy, and because at least I can ride the bike down there. So we'll see. Ah, uh, what an idiot. Got the wrong prescription with me. Uh, I don't think he had the drops anyway. He had to order them in, so it wouldn't have made any difference. I could have got the antistatins, but I've already got some of those, and that's not the most crucial thing. Ah, uh, the joys of old age and all the medication you've got to juggle. On top of that, they stop supplying the one you need, and they can't get the substitute. So it keeps life interesting, I guess. I'm trekking up this bit for familiar road again on a Monday and the reason being that uh, the uh, liquor land's got their good discounts on again so $15 off if you spend over 125 bucks so I got myself a couple of bottles of uh, the clean skin gin and the uh, Sailor Jerry and I'll qualify it for it so just got to go and pick it up now so it's a good deal, really, because it uh, saves me a bit of money and also gets me out of the house and forces me to have a, a walk, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, the weather's pretty damn good. Put some sunscreen on, just in case. But uh, probably not much of an issue this time of year. And, uh, yeah, I also finished the second instalment of my uh, first series story that I'm writing on Amazon and that's the one on Operation Barbarossa just finished the second instalment I'll sit it put it in, in a uh, in the drawer as it were for a couple of weeks and then have another look at it, do a final edit then uh, publish it but uh, I've had more interest in that story than anything else that I've uh, put up, the other short stories really didn't garner that much interest at all so they were pretty well done but uh, I might have struck on something a little more topical with this one so we'll see and I think the, the longer it is the more uh, publicity I'll get for it I think is it gets uh, 
gets more cute, you get more cute as a rider for the longer length stuff. Uh, for me, this is an easier way of writing a novel to just do it in sections like that. And uh, eventually I'll have enough material that would make up a novel anyway. So, um, But I find this is a better way. I didn't even know what the plot was going to be doing until uh, about a day ago. I sort of came up with an idea. It was getting a bit stagnant, had a lot of dialogue and not much action. And the beauty of writing things like novels or um, short stories is you know it's constrained by budgets and things like they are in Hollywood to make movies or TV shows although special effects are getting cheaper but um, you can do anything you're only limited by your imagination which is one of the exciting aspects of it all but uh, yes it's uh, it's uh, going well now so I've got, to, I've got into a bit of seed uh, planting and there has been some germination taking place early days my petunias seem to be doing the best although I did transplant them and there's still a little shell shock from it after a day hopefully they'll be back to full health and they'll grow but they need more space so I had to do it and uh, it'd be great if one of my uh, the, the seeds for a tree actually uh, germinated that would be exciting but not so far. So we might just have to wait on that one. <sighs> I've got to go damp back to the damn hospital tomorrow and then I'm going to be uh, going to have to go into Brisbane fairly soon just for a day. But uh, it's early morning, I have to get up about 4.30 for that one to catch a 6 o'clock flight. Not looking forward to that. Well, as you can see, it's dead as a doornail here, so I came to the conclusion it's a public holiday. Even the uh, the real estate sharks are off work. Uh, so so that proves it's, um, yeah, definitely, it is a public holiday. I asked the, the girl at Liquorland, thank God Liquorland's open. So I guess that's another good reason to have the sale if they've got a public holiday happening. But uh, there were a couple of boxes behind the counter, so... I wasn't the only person taking up the $15 deal. But, uh, oh, always nicer on the return leg. I sort of dread all, having forced exercise like this. It's pathetic. I need it. Uh, still get a bit of that twinge in my arm, but I guess it'd be worse if I didn't do any walking. So, uh, and it definitely went when I was in Vietnam when I, I did a lot more. It's just the way it is over there. We're exploring and just uh but i've been doing a bit more walking up here the recent times the weather's been good that helps but i still haven't been down the beach so that's pretty bad i wanted to talk about a couple of crazy tv programs that have been on re reality programs of course the one that's probably one of the strangest ones is a uh, is say coming from america and I think it's it's four uh, mixed race families. I mean, uh, the wives are generally African descent, and they're going, I guess, going home to to the roots. Although one of the couples, they're all they're, they're both black, so they're both like, got got roots in in Africa, and so they're leaving places like New York and going to Ghana. The only good thing about it is, I suppose, they, they speak the same language at least, but but it's, um, you know, a huge drop in standard of living and things, so you sort of wonder, do they really know what they're doing? <laughs> nice place to have a holiday, but would you want to live there? And it is st starting to become apparent that certain things like uh, potable water are not available all the time. And, of course, electricity and many other things that you take for granted in a first-world country. They're basically... But the weirdest thing about one of the couples is the guy, I think he's a hairdresser by trade, but he has aspirations to be a stand-up comedian. And he's done a few gigs in New York. But for some reason, he thinks he can take that particular skill set to a place like Ghana. 
and make money. Well, he's not going to make American money, obviously. No one's going to pay him the same rates that you would in the US. Not that it's that lucrative for most stand-ups who are struggling. But it just seems strange, you know what I mean? And, of course, all the women seem to be a little on the neurotic side with it. They've got issues with their relationships and stuff, especially the one that's married to the stand-up comic. Uh, they seem to spend half their time with the marriage counsellor. That's half the show, so it's getting a bit tedious, you know. Um, you would hope a show like that would be an interesting insight into how people used to living in, in a first-world environment would make the, the transition, but it's got more soap opera elements like that, which sort of turns me off a bit. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend it, although it's good to a reasonably high rating from a fairly small voting audience on uh, Internet Movie Database, but uh, not one of my favourites. Well, Tuesday, and uh, last night did see the Wallabies out because it was been night. There were a couple just a block away. Not a block away, a, a house away, I should say. <coughs> so that was interesting. <coughs> it's uh, good to... Um, very happy I got my... Uh, second instalment of my uh, story done yesterday um, once I got in the groove it was quite easy so um, just had to be in the right mood there were a few days when I didn't even do any writing but uh, that's just the way it is hopefully the um, the bus will be um, will be here today because it wasn't it was a no show last week uh, that's a school bus that just went by but uh Hopefully I'll see the normal bus come by fairly soon too, so, which would indicate that uh, it's here, which is good. See, you've still got all these workers' huts and things on the other side there. Some major work going on in that house. I want it to be. Yeah, the other thing I was thinking is, because I um, finished the second installment of my story, I think maybe I could just start the other story that I'd written, I've written basically, um, but I haven't actually uh, published anything. So what I was thinking of doing, it's a story I've had for years, and um, about megafauna. And what I'm thinking of doing is maybe do the same that I'm doing with the one I'm currently writing, the uh, the other Barbarossa story, Operation Barbarossa story. I'm thinking of basically doing this one in. Uh, that I have written in instalments in um, the same way. So that way, at least I can get something out in the marketplace before I've actually had a chance to to complete the, the, the total story, which will be longer than, um, than anything else that uh, I'll probably be putting up there, unless Operation Barbarossa does keep work growing. And it may, because... Um, I'm actually no, not as far into the story as I thought I would be. So maybe I'm just getting used to that type of writing because in the past I've done screenplay writing and you have to be very concise and you just can't really indulge yourself with characters and what have you. But in um, when you're writing a uh, something like a, a novel, you can do all that. So it's a, it's a different, a totally different format. Anyway, hopefully... Oh, the other weird thing, I didn't mention this, but the, last week there were two people waiting with me on the other side there for a bus. One was an Asian lady. She sort of asked me, you know, what's going on with the bus? And I told her, and a few minutes later she just walked off. She's just given up, I guess. But the other one was still there when I got on the bus, but she didn't actually get on the bus. So... Maybe she was waiting for a pickup from a friend or something. It was very strange. Anyway, probably a logical explanation to it in this illogical world. That's strange. That guy that in that car that's just pulling up down the road, he pulled up on the other side of the road to me when I was walking down my street, and then just then he pulled up to the actual the bus stop. And just stopped momentarily and pulled off again. Very strange. Sort of felt like I'm being stalked. Uh, by the way, the bus did go past, so the 111 is here today. 
So I won't have to wait another half hour, which will be good. Not that the weather's too bad. It's uh, quite a nice day, a bit of a breeze. But uh, top of 31, I think. So, yeah, it's not bad at all. So, uh, and I don't have to uh, go to it, have anything else done today. So I'll be, I'll probably be home around two-ish, which will be good. Maybe even sooner, depending on how the buses are running. But I don't know if I'd by the chance getting the 110 again, because I don't, don't feel really like walking home from uh, the bus stop, although it is good for the health, so I have to think about that one. Uh, and if I don't do that, really I should go and walk down the beach, but I think there's Buckley's chance I'll do it, even though it would be the right thing to do. And today will be salad day, because I'm going to buy some fresh greens. I actually had frozen greens last night because I'd run out of my fresh stuff because I didn't get a, um, a Coles delivery this week. So uh, every second or third week I skip the Coles delivery. I just don't need it all the time. Anyway, so it's... But I miss out on my fresh greens. I could take the the e-bike up to Coles in Clifton Beach, but I never do it. <clears throat> well, that was one of the most frustrating uh, days on the buses at the end. The bus was almost um, 20, 25 minutes late, the uh, one coming back on the, uh, from Smithfield. And I could have got the 110, you know, maybe about uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes prior to that. And I would have been home, even with the, the half hour walk, uh, probably at least half an hour before that the bus just dropped me off. The timetable seemed to be scrapped at the moment by Kinetic. It just none of the buses seem to be running to schedule. It's very frustrating. So I can't possibly get the 110 and then hope that the 111 is just behind it and I can catch it to the actual beach itself from the highway. It just doesn't work under these circumstances. Like I say, the whole system's collapsing. Has it got anything to do with the cheap affairs? Maybe. I mean, that would slow down the bus having more people on board. But again, if you don't have to uh, sell the, the complicated tickets you had in the past, it might be a little faster doing the transactions. But, you know, I'm not sure. But I suspect that they probably have been slowed down and it may have affected the timetables. Uh, unanticipated consequences. That's what we've got here. And, uh, you know politicians they don't think things through do they and they never never travel on public transport